What's up, people? It's your Believe, and if you click this video, you want to know how to improve your gameplay and win more gunfights. And I'm going to tell you the honest truth about how to do that more often and more consistently. All right, and before I give you three tips to improve your gameplay, you have to understand one crucial thing is that you're going into Warzone, into Verdansk, knowing that you're going to try to improve your gameplay. This is practice. Don't go in expecting a win, all right? You're going in to improve yourself. That is what you're doing. Now, the first tip for all of you guys, this seems really easy, but a lot of people don't understand this, is know your loadout, all right? Take the time to go on YouTube to research, find out which loadout is going to be the best loadout to use to improve and compete against other players. So this sounds super easy, all right? Everyone wants to know what the meta is, right? And why does everyone wants to know what the meta is? By understanding what loadouts are the best loadouts in Warzone, you decrease your handicap. This means you have the best loadout in the game. So the only thing you really have to focus on is either your positioning or how you're playing fights. So in order to find the best loadout, you're gonna have to either one, spend the time and go through every single gun and find out which one you're winning more gunfights with Two, find out which gun you keep dying to over and over and over and over again and then figure out which attachments they're running or you can look at channels like jgod true game data or me and we give you guys the best loadouts for the fastest time to kill the best accuracy over distance stuff like that to help improve your gameplay so you don't have to go go through the time to figure out what guns you need to run in order to have a better advantage in winning your gunfights more consistently. So tip number two, you guys are not going to like this, but it is you must stop using harpy sensors, okay? I understand a really good thing about harpy sensors is you could use it forever in Warzone, okay? I feel like they should definitely have batteries or something that reduces the life of the harpy sensor every time you're just pulling it out non-stop so it seems like a good equipment to use just because you use it forever but really it leaves you at a disadvantage so you're asking me why does it leave you at a disadvantage so the biggest issue i have with beginner players using a harpy sensor is it gives you the illusion that you have awareness of your surroundings but in reality, because you're paying so much attention to your heartbeat sensor, if the enemy has ghosts, you end up just getting caught like red handed with your freaking baby sensor looking at the map, you know what I mean? So I highly recommend you not to run a heartbeat sensor, but instead run stunts. Look, I get it. A lot of pro players run heartbeat sensors, but the reason why a lot of pro players run harpy sensors is because pro players already understand how to position themselves properly in a gunfight to win the engagement and if you have a harpy sensor because you're worried about people camping in corners let's let's be real all right people who are camping in corners are going to be running cold-blooded and ghosts so you're not going to be able to find them either way so the best thing to do is to run stuns and why run stuns yeah, they're one time use, right? But you get two of them and you can find them all over the floor occasionally or even, you know, in the ammo crates. But the big and important thing about stuns is the fact that it actually helps you when you misposition yourself. So if you're pushing somebody and you're in an ugly position, you could always use your stuns to give yourself a huge advantage in that gunfight. So let's go ahead and look at an example of me using stuns to help me win a gunfight. So in this example right here, it's gonna show you guys just how good stuns are to help decrease your chances of losing a gunfight when you misposition yourself, okay? And then I'm gonna be pausing this one in and out. I don't know if you guys wanna see the whole thing first and then I go back and re-explain what I did. Uh, but what I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna play it one time through and explain what I'm doing. So before we start, I just wanna say it's very important to listen to cues, all right? Cues being shadows or footsteps or random noises of people putting on armor or just dialogue. Um, but when I push up this wall, my boy has a perfect shot on two dudes because we're playing trios right here and one of the guys is in the gulag. Uh, but I end up hearing the footsteps of the guy that he marked, all right? I have no idea where it is. The mark's in a very interesting, weird location. But if you listen carefully when I get to the wall, uh, to the brick wall, you're gonna hear footsteps on my left. Right. I don't have a shot. They don't, they don't see me, they don't see me. I'm, I'm in from the back, I'm in. So right there, even though my teammate's yelling, 
I hit him from the back. He's engaging in this team fight right here already. But there's someone on my left side. If you have headphones on, you can definitely hear it. But he's on my left hand side, so I know to wait behind this wall to position myself to engage in this fight. Come back. Once I grow on me somewhere. And look at this guy. See? He's running a Harby Center. He has no idea where the hell I am, but he knows I'm right in front of him. Because I, I believe right now I don't even have ghosts yet. But he's right in front of me and he has his freaking Harby Center out. He could even hear me stepping in front of him. Right? If I could hear his footsteps, he definitely should be able to hear my footsteps, especially because I'm shuffling around not knowing where they're going to be at. But right here, somehow, that didn't down the guy. And then I get, I don't know if it's called third party, but his his other teammates end up trying to fight me instead because I'm sure they're calling out, yo, I, there's someone right in front of me, okay? And there's a third dude all the way in the back here. Luckily, two, I got two people's attention on me and I have easy cover. Um, and then luckily... Speedy McGee ends up taking these two down. Uh, let me go ahead and just show you guys the clip. And a boom. I got no health. Okay? No health. See, if you hear that right there, you can hear the footsteps on my right-hand side. And if anything, because I'm cracked, the boy, his teammate who just cracked me is saying, you need to push right now. This guy has no armor. So he ends up pushing me. One. But you did not expect that son. And then right here, this is also very crucial, is understanding when to push, all right? I know that there's some players that if this happened, they will take the few extra seconds to put on armor and then re-engage. But if you do that, you're just going to leave yourself at a huge disadvantage because he's not going to be stunned anymore. He's going to be able to turn around and beam you right away. So right here is the perfect time for me to push if this this person i stunned was actually his teammate with full armor i will still be able to take his teammate down at least because he's stunned and i have an as val with at least half a mag left in it and that's a thirst i think i got you got two okay I got two, yeah. so you All got right, two I got and i got one so that's full oh. one Holy shit, dude, I played that guy so hard. Super shocked. Because I have stuns. Alright, so that's super important of why stuns are way better at helping your gameplay, especially when you misposition yourself in a gunfight. So for the last and final tip, you guys are not gonna like this one either, but you guys all need to stop using ghosts. Okay? So the only way to improve your gameplay and improve your positioning in gunfights is to be aggressive and always being in gunfights so by not using ghosts you could use other perks that will greatly help your ability to correct your mispositioning or know when people are actually looking at you so the first one will be restock to help with your stuns and the second perk will be a high alert to help when people are actually looking in your direction so if you guys don't know restock is a second perk that helps recharge your equipments every 50 seconds so yeah that's about every minute or so but you don't fight continuously non-stop for more than maybe 50 minutes you're gonna ha you're gonna have some downtime eventually to where you can actually re reacquire your stuns or even your flashes but i highly recommend you use stuns uh, for your next gunfight and you're able to hold two stuns and then for the other perk you could use high alert so this one's really good because it shows you like a yellow pulse on the side of your camera or your vision and it shows you where enemies are actually looking at you so you know if people are on your right side left side or if someone's trying to snipe you across the map from behind you know if someone's looking at you so these two perks are great alternatives from running goes and let me guess you guys are going to ask me why do i want to run these instead of ghosts because i'm going to be on the map well that's the freaking point okay you want to be on the map because you want people to come to you. You want to be pushing people and you want to be able to have these gunfights to have more repetitions to increase your gameplay, to increase your map knowledge and your gunfight knowledge. So these are super important things you have to understand, right? Yeah, when you first start doing this, you're gonna get rolled up by little campers with ghosts and they're gonna have heartbeat sensors, this and that. But the point is, 
by just having that right mindset like i told you guys in the beginning go in knowing you're going to just play to improve yourself and then maybe after a few matches of playing super thirsty and rushing everyone you could switch over and play with your guys or play solos or whatever and really go for the win and play a little bit more conservative but this is to help improve your gameplay and your stats or your kd whatever you want over a long period of time and it will help you become more consistent into your gunfights and improve your overall gameplay especially when you win matches it'll feel a lot more satisfying because you'll have more than three kills five kills hell maybe even 10 kills so i hope you guys enjoy this video of me giving you guys three honest truths about how to improve your gunfights and your gameplay in general and like I said, it's through a long period of time. But if you guys like this video, please do me a favor, smash that like button. If you guys made it through all of this, a big shout out to you. Let me know in the comments if you made it through this far. And if you guys found value in my content, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, share this video to all your boys who need to hear the honest truth about how to improve their gameplay. I'll see you guys next time in Warzone. Good luck. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.